Hey, what's up? This is Big Lee with Hustler Spirit. I got you know who I got in the house. What's up, Fleece? Man, I'm wrapped up, man. I'm all right. I want to talk, man. You know, people been telling me with all my experience in prison, jail, in the streets. You know what they tell me? They say, talk to the youth. I say, what? Talk to the young people. I say, tell them what? I, they not the problem. I say, I want all you young people to know male, female, black, white, whatever you call you not the problem. The problem is the older people. The older people is the one that runs everything. They run the government, the system. They run all them agencies that your mama is complaining about them taking her benefits and her food stamps and all this stuff. So people going to ask me to talk to the young people and tell them what? Tell them to stop making money? No, I'm not. I'm going to tell you to stop killing each other. It's a better way to go about it, right? You know, it took me a while to learn it on my own, but believe me, I know where you at, right? There are people out here in society that I wish I could kill, but I know it ain't the right thing to do, right? And so I refrain from it. It ain't nothing but a trap. You know, a trap you don't want to get yourself involved in, right? Things you can walk away from, walk away from it. Things you don't have to do, don't do it. Don't let nobody uh, persuade you to do something that you know in your heart is wrong to do. Don't go there. It's weakness on your part. See, I learned as a child, when I went to prison at a younger age, I was seeking attention, man. I wanted to be accepted by everybody as as a thug against all that old crap. And look what it cost me, 40 years in prison. Man, I could have retired on two jobs and be set straight. Don't have to steal or nothing. But I let my environment, the society I grew up in, the community, the ghetto influenced me to get off into something that I wish I never got off into. But at the same time, I'm glad I got off into it, if you can understand that, because I learned a lot where I can help you. I hope I can. Talk some sense in your head, bro. You know, they got people that killing over nothing, nothing, silly stuff. Oh, they say it's the principle. Oh, is it? The what, what kind of principle? Oh, he disrespected me, violated me. Violated you? Well, let me say this to you. Since you, you think you're a gangster and killing is good, I, let's say you go to prison. That's where you're going. That's where you'll go to prison. But let me ask you this. Are you going to kill somebody for calling you out of your name or taking something from you or stealing from you? Hey, you can't stop her. You might as well kill the whole world. Huh? Are you that dead gangster? Or do you just get your picks? I'm going to kill this nigga because this nigga's weak. Uh, I, can, I know I can kill him. And what, what, the reason you kill somebody for, you going to spur everybody else and treat you the same way? If everybody called me a bitch motherfucker, if I drop on somebody for that, then I need to drop on everybody else that calls me that. I don't stop her. You know, that's what gangsters is. But you ain't no gangster. Ain't nothing of you gangsters. And if gangster ain't nothing you want to be, really. I mean, what is a gangster? A rotten, angry motherfucker. That's what a gangster is. Somebody that don't care, ain't got no conscience, don't know the difference between right and wrong. But you go, let, let, let Hollywood tell you, 
being against is something good. White people. It comes into your belief system. Your beliefs, what you believe in, where did them beliefs come from? Did it come from you? Nah. Somebody, you walking around with other people's beliefs in your head. People to tell you, hey man, what he do? He violate you? Man, go get that gun and, and do it, man. You got other people's beliefs in your head. You ain't walking around with your own beliefs. You walking around with other people's beliefs. I want to be like them. I want to be a gangster. I want to be a crip. I want to be a blood. I want to be a vice versa. I want to be a gangster disciples. I want to be all them other gangs. Why can't you be you? What's wrong? What's what's wrong in being you? Huh? Why you gotta pretend to be somebody else? Why can't you be yourself? Think on it. Your belief. What do you believe in? Do you believe you were born to kill? Do you believe this life was given to you to uh, take other people's lives? Uh, here's a question. Were you brought into this world to be good or bad? Simple question. Ask yourself that. How will you want to be brought into this world to do good or to do bad? Ask yourself that. And if you're doing bad, ask yourself why. If you was brought in the world to do good, why ain't you doing good? See, it's a lot you don't know. And y'all listen to me. I care about y'all, man. That's why I say the problem ain't y'all, it's the older people. But we can't keep on leaning in on the older people. Y'all doing things out there you shouldn't be doing, man. Young people. Every time I turn the TV on, somebody's getting killed. Somebody's getting killed over what? Stupid stuff. Because you want to be tough. And when you kill somebody, you think it's over, you go back and brag about it. Yeah, I killed that nigga, I sprayed him, I sprayed his whole house, I sprayed his car. But what you gonna say when they catch you? Huh? What you gonna say when them detectives set you in that room and tell you what you facing? We got you for first degree murder, buddy. You get ready to get either the death sentence, or life in prison, or life without parole. For killing somebody. Do you still think it's funny? Do you still think you did the right thing? When you sitting up in that nasty jail? Or you got to go in the penitentiary and fight everybody? And risk losing your own life? Man, I'm telling you right now. I ain't never joined a gang or clique. Because you know why? I'm not going to let nobody tell me what I need to do. I do what I need to do. I got a man of my own, man. I got my own beliefs. You can't talk me into nothing like that. To go out here and kill somebody. I go out here and take somebody's shit. If I do that, I, I do it based on me. Ain't nobody going to talk me into shit. And all you young people out there, I'm going to tell you something, man. You want to cry like little babies, y'all call yourself men. I'm a man. You little young girls, yeah, I'm a woman, I'm grown. But let me tell you something. If you're man enough and woman enough to do what you do, be man and woman enough to suffer the consequences because you got something coming. Yeah. And you think all your friends is going to hold cool? Man, when people get locked up and facing time, you know what they tell them detectives? Man, I know something. I know somebody that killed somebody. Uh, this is, you're going to get locked up, bro. Uh, woman, uh, man, woman, whoever you are, you're going to get locked up. You run around here thinking that stuff is good, killing and, and taking people's shit. You know, but like I said, the main problem is the older people. 
Let me speak on that. The older people. Let's take the government. They get on TV and they complaining about the Crips and the Bloods. The Crips is blue. The Bloods is red. Okay. The government, Democrats is blue. Republicans is red. And what do they do? Fight. The blue and red fight each other. They, been, they get on TV and talk about each other and say things that would really cause you to want to kill somebody. They be trying to get each other killed. They get on TV and put on this big old uh, thing, uh, the uh, Republican and Democrats. They showing the whole America, the red and blue states, that they Crips and Bloods. That's where all that stuff really originally came from. It didn't come from no California. So-and-so created the Crips. He created the blood bullshit. It came from the government. The Crips and Bloods came from that government stuff. All that red states and blue states fighting each other. So we got a government that is teaching the young people how to be who they are right now. This uh, men's society. You know, we got all that going on. Ain't nobody talking about it. The government got their nerves getting on TV talking about it. The violence in America. What about the violence in politics? What about that? What these older people are doing that should be setting good example for the younger people? All these people in Washington and all these politicians, red and blue, supposed to be setting good examples for the youth of this country, man. But you know what they do? They set up and fight each other, red and blue. So the youth think it's good. They red and blue out here in society, just like the government is. And they doing the same thing the government is doing, fighting each other. So I don't like it. And they tell somebody to talk to the youth. No, I'm going to talk to the older people. You need to change your ways. If you want to see a change in the youth, change your ways. Stop taking their mama's food stamps. Stop taking benefits from people that really need benefits. Stop uh, making it difficult for uh, uh, poor people to get good jobs. Make a way possible where poor people can do anything but get evicted out of their houses. And y'all want to know why young people took to the streets? They don't want to live that life, man. You think these young people want to grow up uh, poor and, and uh, relying on the government, relying on the government that don't care about them? That's what I'm going to say. Y'all don't care about America. All you politicians out there, Democrats and Republicans, do you really care about uh, America, you don't. Because if you didn't, if you did, you wouldn't be doing all this ignorant stuff up and fighting each other. Setting a bad example for the young people in your country to follow. Because they the ones that's going to take the country. Y'all going to die and go, go grow old and die. And these young people going to take over your office. And is that a good example to set for them? Oh, they should fight. Republicans and Democrats should fight. Get on TV, tell American people, I need your vote. I won't vote for none of you. I don't care if you're Joe Biden or Donald Trump. I ain't voting for none of you. Because you ain't worthy to be voted for what? Why would I vote for somebody that's corrupt? Somebody that don't really care about young people out of the country. <coughs> rather show the world what America show the world you show the whole world how foul America is that's all I'm going to say on that subject alright I was having feelings uh, about a friend of mine I don't know where he's at his name was Switchblade Danny 
That's what they say that I, 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 like I ain't purposely know him on the streets. I knew him in jail. And I was calling Swiss Blade. And he'll do something like, you know, you know the shit where you snap blades and make that shit. The butterfly knives. Yeah. Knife and stuff. They said, Swiss Blade, what's up, dude? He go, I thought he was a hell of a motherfucker. For real, I did. I ain't gonna lie, I was nervous for him. I say, they talk about all he does is cut people, stab them. He was a knife, kern, knife. He, he just a knife man. But one day in penitentiary, when we got, I got to Eddieville, Switchblade come down there, uh-huh. talking all that old Switchblade shit. But you ain't got Switchblades in penitentiary. You ain't got your guns or none of that shit. You just got a bunch of horny, hard dick motherfuckers wanting to fuck something. I'm just put it like that. You just got a whole lot of people hard wanting to screw something. Just put it like in practical good words. And one day, I was walking the loop in Eddieville, and I was feeling kind of queasy in my stomach, man. I was, I'm going to go in my cell and lay down. So I went to the yard office and told the guard, man, I'm going to go in today, man. So he had the guard escorted me to the cell. As he opened the door, I went on up the steps and all that stuff. So when I got to my floor, the floor officer opened the gate, let me in. He said, what's wrong, Flea? I said, man, I'm just feeling kind of bad, man. I just want to lay down, man. He said, well, your walk door is open. Go on in front of your door. So I walked on the walk. I'm walking down the hall. I ain't thinking about nothing. And when I got in front of my cell, my cell was like halfway in the walk. Switchblade cell was the last cell on the walk. So I heard something go, uh, oh, hold it. Hold up. Then somebody said, talking too loud or something like it. I said, who the fuck stayed in? I said, that's probably my nigga Switchblade back out. You know, he's probably, you know. I said, I'm going to go back out and holler at this nigga, man. <laughs> man, I walked back up. This nigga, this nigga, I ain't going to call his name out, but he had switchblade, dog style, on the bed, pumping nothing but, looked like he was putting a, 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 a log in him. Uh, he was pumping, and his, his butt cheeks was just shaking. And he was taking it, like, you know, like a woman. And, and, and I said, oh, man. You know, out of frustration, I had to say something, man. And the dude that was, was doing him, uh, he gets smarter than me. Nigga act like he wanted to fight me. He pulled out a dude. I, watched, I stood up and watched him pull all that thing out of him. Nigga looked like a log. And uh, Sweet Bay looked at me, and I'm like, man, I'm just shaking my head like it. So this nigga, he, he gonna tell me, he said, uh, what's your problem, dude? You run back here trying to catch somebody doing something? I said, man, go on somewhere. He said, go on somewhere. He said, nigga, I'll knock you. You gonna knock who out? Nigga, you got me messed up, nigga. I went back in front of my door, and, when, and, and, and they go, uh, just turned the wall, and I was happy. He, when he opened my cell, cause I always have something in my cell, you know, he, I got good places to have stuff. I grabbed that thing, stepped up out of that door, and walked back on, and he was out there, he said, what's up? I said, what do you mean, what's up, nigga? Talking about what you gonna do to me. We gonna solve this right now. I ripped him. But here's the point. I get out of the hole 45 days later. I got 45 days because I messed him up a little bit. So who do I run into? Switchblade. So I'm sitting down trying to collect my thoughts. I don't even know why I even fought over this dude, man. I'm mad about it. I, I keep messing up my time, man. And so he sat down and said, can I sit down? I said, yeah. He said, man, I know you mad at me. I said, mad at you for what? He said, man. I broke weak. I said, man, look, man, I don't want to hear all that, bro. 
All you need to do is fight back. I said, man, me, I'm not no hell of a fighter, man. I'm a hell of a thinker. There's no man alive I can't walk if I fight in my way. I don't care if he's Muhammad Ali, Bruce Lee, uh, anybody. If I fight you my way of fighting, I'm going to win. You can be Mac Dillon off of gun smoke. Because you know what I do with him? I shoot him in his back. That's how I win. Oh, yeah, I don't believe in that honor thing. I don't believe in giving a person a chance to kill me. When it come out of your mouth, you want to kill me? I don't care if I catch you on the toilet, sleep, bent over. I got to see you. If I really think you're going to try that, oh, yeah, I'm going to get you first. So, you know, Bruce Lee. Even though he do all that old kung fu kicking and all that, what can he do if I hit him in his head with a something? If I bust his head open, he's going to the ground. He ain't going to be able to kick. He ain't going to be able to do nothing. But lay there and take what I give him. That's how I win fights. I don't fight fur because here's the reason. I don't like fighting. I go out of my way to prevent it, but if somebody push me into a fight, you're going to get a nasty person. Yeah, I, when I'm done with you, I'm going to win. But you're going to run your mouth. I don't care. But look, let me tell you something else. I'm going to talk about the Muslims. Now, Farrakhan, I know y'all going to uh, get this. We on the same page. But let me tell you what I know. Since people think I'm so... I don't know how white people are. Man, when I see food prices go up on beef, the first thing hit my mind is the Muslims. Whoever raising these prices, corporations that run everything in the world, corporations, big corporations, they call the shots. When they raise prices, everybody raises prices. So when all the meat uh, prices start going up, I saw this, what I see this. Somebody is trying to uh, uh, make it hard on the Muslim population to buy, because they don't eat no pork, they eat beef. So what better way to get at them is, uh, other than raise your prices up, you know, and uh, make them try to uh, take all their money, because they got a nice congregation there in the Muslims. They got a lot of people involved in their ministry. But uh, uh, the best way to get to them is to raise them prices, keep raising beef prices up. And what is they going to do? Force them to buy more? Unless they got their own cattle, uh, their own beef uh, companies. I know white people, just like Rosa Park, the lady that sits on the bus that didn't want to give her a seat up. Let me tell you how I know white people. I got on the bus one day, and the bus driver told me, this is Rosa Parks Day. You can't sit in these two front seats. You know, we celebrating. I said, you ain't celebrating nothing. Y'all trying to uh, uh, shit on this woman. What you telling me I can't do is what she protested. Y'all telling her to go in the back, she sat in the front. Now you trying to tell me in celebration of her, I got to go in the back. No, I'm going to sit in the front. And that's what I did. And then when I went up there in uh, Minnesota, I brought a bacon sandwich up there. It cost me $16. I understood now by that, that white people don't have to put that sign on the door. No colors allowed. Raise your prices up. Keep them out. See, I see all the economical bull crap out here in society. I know how white people are. I know how, man, listen, but let me speak it's on white people too. Not all of them is bad. So let's get there. Because during slavery, there was a lot of white people that kissed their family goodbye and told them they're going to join the protest. They went out there, left their kids home and everything, went out there to protest. A lot of them got killed. <laughs> Trying to stay with 
stand against slavery. I know all that. I know how evil white people can be. So, I know. So, the people, they heard me saying, I thank white people. You didn't have the mentality out of knowledge to know where I was coming from, but I'm deep. Really, I think I'm deeper than you. Y'all walked out of the room, I don't want to hear this no more. You don't want to hear what? The truth? That we was brought over here in America, and look what came out of it. Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, uh, all them people, you know, movie stars and stuff, right? And y'all still try to make our life miserable, right? We don't want to put you in the moon. Black people put you on the moon. And I, I, I've seen that movie, how they treated them. I think them, them girls, uh, Hidden Figures, is the name of the movie, treated them like crap, even though they, they taught them how to go to the moon. So we ain't dealing, I'm not dealing with somebody I don't know. I know white people well. All right? So now let me get off to this. Here's what troubles me, right? We live, like, I left prison. And I ain't gonna lie, a lot of friends and I. Somebody sent a comment, oh, I don't know how they laid him out. Uh, why them dudes didn't just turn him up? Let me tell you why, boy. I made stuff happen in prison. When they took cigarettes, guess who had cigarettes? Me. When they took, say we can't drink or have liquor, guess who had home brewing liquor in prison? Me. When they say we can't smoke weed, guess who had all the weed? Me. And guess who brought it in? My guards. So I was cool with a lot of inmates based on my abilities to help people in prison. You know, we know we locked up. We know what we did to get locked up. But you don't have to try to treat us like dirt, right? I stood against that. I fought a one-man battle in a, in one. So anybody can try to throw something at me, you ain't throwing nothing because ask all the prisoners. If you want to know who Free Johnson is, ask somebody. Because I'm going to tell you this. I got a woman. And you know what? Every time we go shopping, most of the time, not every time, but most of the time, we got inmates, hard inmates, that run up to my woman and tell her, your husband saved my life. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be out here on the streets. And then y'all didn't know I was a paralegal in prison? Did y'all know that I got over 60 people out of prison on the streets? Did y'all know that? Oh, you didn't know it. You know, while you out here running your mouth about me, what 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 have you been doing? Read read one of those case numbers. Uh I tell you what I'll do. No, no, don't pull it up. Read it, read like you, you did the other day. Yeah. Kendrick versus Bland. No, not that one, Doug. You read it. Callus versus Bull. Yeah. Callus versus Bull. This is a landmark case. It was way back in the days when uh, America declared their independence from Britain. And the British came over and set up our legal system over in America. But now all our Supreme Court back in, Justice Thomas and Justice Chase, that's who was Supreme Court judges back in, and it was another one. But I remember them names. Look, Justice Chase had a question. He didn't know what ex post facto is. It's a, it's in the Constitution. It's one of the uh, amendments that no government, nobody can take from you. You know, the rights of the people. They didn't know what ex post facto is, and so they tried to retroactive it. 
all Expo Facto was a, a law making provision, teaching correct ways to make a law. For instance, you got a lot of people in California and all over America is, is, is being given uh, enhancement uh, sentences. Like, you go to a judge and you say, uh, let's say the maximum you can get for this crime is 10 years. That's the maximum that the law says you can get. 10 years. That's the maximum penalty. But you go before a judge, he said, I'm giving you 10 years for this, and I'm going to enhance it to a life sentence. So you ask the judge, how you going to do that? I understand I got 10 years for the crime, but what the life sentence come from? He said, uh, because you are a persistent felony, uh, 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 you know, inmate. He said, what you mean? He said, because of your past crimes. He said, well, I've already been sentenced and convicted for my past crimes. How you going to redo it? That's double jeopardy. So he said, well... To prevent you from committing crimes like it's in the future. Who is to say I'm going to even commit a crime in the future? So where is this? What did I get the life sentence for, man? See, ex facto teaches the correct way to make laws. It's saying you can't create a law. You can't have two laws active at the same time. One saying 10 years is the max you can get. One saying we can enhance that to a life sentence. It's two, two laws that is, 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 is uh, you can't have it like that. You got to do away with one to, to keep the one. In other words, you got you would have to head up. They would have to head up. Did away with the ten year sentence, and then come out with a, uh, if you commit so many felonies, it can be enhanced, right? But you can't have two two statues active at the same time. It's confusion. But America, you got people locked up right now that shouldn't even be locked up. It's illegal and it's wrong. And that's what I fought against. But you know the government? Uh, we ain't do nothing wrong. If we, if, if, if we change that, at, at, if we change this to where it's supposed to be, because over in Britain, enhancement is illegal. So I knew I was on the right track. So America don't want to acknowledge that, right? They want to keep these people locked up, like somebody going out and commit a crime in California, shoplifting, three strikes you out. I mean, it's foolishness. And so, you know, that's the stuff that I, 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 I went to war over, that type of stuff. I fought for people in prison. So anybody out there that thinks I'm just a piece of shit, you are. You ask the people in prison, I fought for them. I fought for a lot of people and I fought for their rights, man. I took on 40 years to just to help people, man. I had 12 years. That's all I had. I ended up with 40 years because I'm in there trying to help somebody. So to come out of here after 40 years and hear all this old silly crap from comments from people that just want to run their mouth, you know, people that can't even stay. You, 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 you couldn't even tie my shoe, bro. Whoever sent that little nasty comment, hey, you ain't even honorable enough to even, even shake my hand, bro. Hey, Fleece, I got a couple questions out of the comment. Yeah, big uh, bro. He was asking, did you lift weights when you was in there? Did you, like, bulk up and get strong? Man, when I first came to prison, man, my arms was this skinny. I didn't even, I'm, I'm going to be real with you, I carried a lot of guns on the street. I was a gun-packing dude, bro. And most of my occupations on the streets involved the guns, so I didn't have to do much fighting. But when I got locked up, I realized I need to learn how to fight. So I joined the boxing. You know, I started boxing. Didn't lose none. 
You hear me? No. Didn't lose a fight. We boxed the army in Eddieville. Four camel brought their soldiers in to box us. And guess who they hated more than anybody? Me. Because every time they bring somebody in, I talk about them. I said, you brought some girls in here? Oh, they hated that. And one day they messed me up with somebody uh, out of my weight class. Everybody in there, you know, told me, said, man, don't, don't do it, bro. This dude's heavyweight, man. And I was middleweight. Don't, come on. I said, man, I ain't seen that, all that old stuff. I said, and I whooped him. And I talked so bad about him that the, 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 the drill sergeant, whoever the hell he was that brought him in, uh, uh, he tried to come at me. Then that's when the prison stopped it. Say they can't come back in no more because we almost got in a fight over me. See, I start shit, you know, sometimes. But I'm going to tell you this, though. There's a story. It's dude, you know, you see some crazy stuff in prison. Like uh, Greg Fry. In one prison, he snitched on some white dudes. Years later, they sent him to Eddieville, the prison I'm in, where the white dudes he snitched on was in. All right, check this out. Was he black? Yeah, he's black. All right. His brother, his name was Ben Higgins. He dead. It's how he died. His little nasty-ass brother came down there, and when them white boys saw him, said, that's, 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 that's the nigga that snitched on us at the Grange. So he went in the shower. Him and his brother's twins. So he took all his clothes off like he's going to take a shower. Then told people in the shower, I tell you, he changed his mind. I was in the shower when he said it. He said, his brother said, you getting in the shower? He said, no, nah, I changed my mind. What he did, it's the winter time, almost winter. We were wearing coats. So he put on his brother's clothes in his coat and walked out of the shower. His brother got out of the shower, put on his clothes and coat. And when he walked out of the shower, then white boys grabbed him because they thought it was him. Thought it was his brother. And one of them grabbed him like his, and the other stabbed him. So. His brother knew that was going to happen. Yeah. He rather gave his brother up to, uh, you, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's only two people in prison that I met that was beyond. It was two situations in prison that was beyond anything I ever went through. And one was Lil Cliff out of Victory. He was the, Cliff was the, I ain't gonna lie, man, to be as young as he was, he was even above me. Cliff was the toughest inmate in that penitentiary, whole system, in America. That's the one I saw that thing inside of. And then another person that I, I, I had respect for, Hear me out, Bowling Green. Bowling Green, Kentucky, hear this out. You on the map. I was in Eddieville and they had a little young guy down there in LaGrange named Santana. Little young guy, real young and good looking little young guy. You know, everybody was, you know, he wasn't no sissy or nothing like that. Santana was straight up. You know, he sold a little weed and all that stuff. One day, <coughs> some white dudes told him the guard wanted him in the, in the TV room. He went in there, they shut the door, put a padlock on him, and they stabbed him to death. Killed him. I was in Eddieville when it happened. They say, hey man, some, some white dudes killed Santana. They didn't know who they were, right? I knew. 
You know, I got connections. You know, people tell me stuff. That little boy's brothers, man, I love y'all, bro. They ain't never been in trouble, no traffic ticket or nothing. When they heard what happened to their little brother, they made themselves get locked up, come to prison, they handled that. Bowling Green handled, handled they, us. They got in trouble on purpose like they be doing on TV. Yeah, yeah, they got, got on purpose just to get in there and avenge their brother. Wow. And I love that part, man. There's <coughs> more I can say on it, but I don't want to say it. Now, I can say this too, man, that, you know, when you think about, uh, think about this, Crips and Bloods, when they hit Eddieville, you know, that stuff wasn't on the streets when I was out. You know, I've been locked up. I heard about Crips, Bloods, Vice Wars, GDs, all this. So they come to Eddieville. On the map, Washington, D.C. Let me put you on the map. There's a brother come out of Washington. Y'all probably know him called Face. Little young cat. Big dude, good looking. Face, you know, he came to uh, Kentucky. Got locked up. Me and Face talked a lot, man. And one day we were sitting up in the bleachers. I want to say, I want to say your name. <laughs> no, I ain't going to say his name. No, I'll say your first name. Roy. Roy got to hollering, fuck the GDs, fuck this, fuck that. And me and Face up are talking, you know. We talking, and here's what we was talking about. We was talking about how to bring the Crips and Bloods together at this moment. That's what our conversation was about. Because these white boys in this penitentiary, yeah, they was more organized, they had more weapons, and they, they, you know, we need to stick together. Now, we ain't got time to battle Crips and Bloods in the penitentiary. We join together. We do this shit when we get out. You know, but right now, it's us against them. The system and all these white people want to be racist. You know. So, me and, Blood, me, me and Face up there talking. He's out of Washington, Face. And if there's any Washington fans listening, y'all probably know him. And I hope Face is listening. Man, Face, say, hold up. They out there on the basketball court, Roy, every time they shoot a basket, Roy, how the fuck the GDs? Man, Face got up out of the bleachers, went down there and mopped him. Mopped him. My big buddy mopped him, right? He came out of the. He came out of the hole, I was like, hey, man. I'm waiting on him when he got out of the hole. So I went through a lot of situations. My name was good in a buddy. When the, the Crips and Bloods did get in the fight, and everybody, I was already in the hole. All of them was locked up. Lil Rob, all of them. County men, all of them. But you ask any of them, the Lexington guys and the Louisville guys, ask who brought them together. I did. I went around every cell. It was about, about 30 from Louisville locked up, about the same amount Lexington locked up. And the guards are so nasty, they put them on the same walk, see? Because they know tomorrow when the door opens, it's going to be a killing. I said, no, I'm not going to allow that, right? I'm going to talk to everybody. So I managed to always have stuff. So I went past everybody's cell. Cigarettes is gone. I'm passing out cigarettes to everybody. They said, where you get this? I oh, mean, don't worry about that. Smoke. And then I start talking. And then the leaders of each one felt me. And I told them, I said, look. Here's what these people going to do. They're going to set y'all out in the morning. They're going to open all these doors in the morning and let y'all kill each other up here. And I talked to them. When I got done talking, everybody came together. Then I had to talk to the administration to let them know because they was thinking about uh, long-terming them. 
keeping them locked up for years. Uh, no, no, uh-uh. I said, man, it ain't going to be a problem. They straight, man. It's just a misunderstanding, this and that. I worked it out. I worked that out for them. When the blacks and the whites got into a fight, I was sitting out there on the loop. I'm OG. And these OG whites, they war horses. They came to me and said, hey, Flea Johnson. I said, yeah. Say, you know, when they let out to the to, to dead at, at dinner, you know they go on the wall, the whites and the blacks. He said, now we OGs, we decide we're going to let the young people do whatever they got to do. We're going to stay out of it. Are you going to stay out of it? I said, yeah, I got faith in my brothers. That's all right. So we stayed out of it. And when they opened them doors, all them little young blacks out of Louisville and Lexington, they came and they mopped it. They, anywhere they saw them, they, 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 they struck them. They fought. But check this out. The administration was behind it. See, I know a lot about white people. I fought them. I know how they how they are. And make no mistake about it. I got some white friends. Like I said, all of them ain't bad. I got white friends I die over, fight with. I fight anybody with over. I got black friends the same way. But I got a lot of white people I can't stand. I know they nasty, especially the ones in power. The ones that be uh, uh, rigging up society for hardship, to have people falling out, going to jail, all this stuff. See, y'all don't realize prison, prison is a business. Y'all be thinking, oh, they just lock them up because they committed a crime. True enough. They are constructing ways to make people commit crimes. Because check this out. In Eddieville, we make all the license plates for Kentucky. Y'all ain't nowhere, did you? You know them orange jumpsuits you see inmates wearing, prisoners wearing on TV? Eddieville Prison makes them and sells them to all the other states. They sell blankets. We make towels. We make washcloths, towels, sheets, blankets, all this stuff. It's the business, man. Do y'all understand that? And they fooling the, uh, the public. And then here's another thing I don't like. We got this black man in Frankfurt, Daniel Cameron. Hey, brother. I don't like him. You know why? Everybody say he's Uncle Tom, all this stuff. No, he's beyond that. He's a henching head. That's what we call a henching head nigga. A who? Henching head nigga. What does that mean? Hatching head nigga. Henching head. He's beyond. This nigga here would do anything for white people. He'll sell out his whole family. Here's what Daniel Cameron said. Now tell me if this makes sense. If you elect me to be governor... I'm going to make it harder for inmates to get out of prison. Make it harder for them to get out of prison. Let me tell you about this. People in society, it should be your main concern. We know y'all locking up the people that is committing crimes in society, and we thank you. But we know they're going to get out someday. So we hope y'all have something in prison to teach them better ways, better manners, how to come out and conduct themselves like citizens, right? Because they will get released. Who in the hell want to create a law? Uh, I'm going to make it harder for them to get out. You know, in other words, frustrate them. Take them through all kinds of stuff. 
And then let them out. Like, what do you think they're going to do when they get out? Filled with all that anger, frustration, hate. They're coming straight to society. They're going to rape, rob you, kill you. You are your kids. That's what they're going to do. Do we need a governor like that? No. That's why I can't understand these Republicans and these Democrats, man. Republicans are supposed to be for a harsh punishment. Democrats are supposed to be for programs, leniencies, and all this stuff, right? I'm like this. If you can't help them, hell. Yeah. If you can help an inmate, if you can help them, you know they're going to get out someday. The, the court just gave this dude 10 years or 20 years or 5 years or 6 years. At the end of that sentence, he'll be out. How do you want him to come out? Do you want him to come out a changed man? Or do you want him to come out ready to tear society apart? So, when it comes to casting your vote on who's going to be the next governor, if you pick Daniel Cameron, hey, don't complain when these inmates get out and tear up your society. Because that's what they're going to do under his leadership. When I first went to Eddieville, remember, February the 18th, 1977, I turned 17. Well, I was 16. I turned 17 in March. But check this out. When I went to Eddieville, this is why they were saying Eddieville was a, the worstest prison in America. Inmates was working in the engineering department. White inmates, not blacks. They go on there, take these metal, and they, they use the granules. And making knives and swords. I sat there and watched it. I watched white inmates run out of that engineering department with a with a uh, a blanket full of weapons and pass them off to another white inmate. And then all the black inmates sat back and watched this. Only thing they had was what? Two brushes. Anything they can make a a, a weapon out of, brick or something. I wasn't, I wasn't impressed, man. I didn't, I didn't care. I don't care what you got. I don't fault people with knives. And I ain't have none in one. So, all this fronting, they used to make sure that blacks were seeing them. They'll run out of there with all these. These niggas be scared of death. They let them white people down in Asia do them like dogs, bro. I come down there, I'm a juvenile. A juvenile. And hit that penitentiary, I said, uh-uh. I don't care if I die in here, bro. Whatever I got to do when I'm done with these people, I'm either going to change this stuff or I'll be dead. Change. But I'm alive and I changed it. So so you saying the uh, white inmates had... They had the advantage, and the uh, prison guards was giving them advantage. And when they start drinking homebrew and all that, then they want to go sing out a black person and kill him, stab him, and all that. Black people, and they were walking around saying nigga. All over the, the guards were saying the word. And when I walked down there, I said, what is this? Everybody walking around talking about niggas, this nigga, 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 white people. And ain't nobody in here doing nothing I'm saying nothing scared of death. I told myself I'm not going to say nothing to none of them first. But when they bring it to me, I'm going to give them what they're looking for, right? More than what they're looking for. And that's what I did. And I wiped that pen attention. I don't care what you, the big mouth, sending them comments. I, here's, a, here's a question. You said, whoever sent that comment said, oh, I wonder why they let him out. Where were you at? Where, where were you? Since you, if, if you know me and know what I'm about, why didn't you do something? 
Pump. That's right. Pump. Why ain't you do something? Sitting there running your mouth. Oh, ask him about Linda Dynamite. Ask him about this. Ask him. I don't care what you ask me about. Ask me about how many battles I won in a. Ask me about how I shut that penitentiary down. How I'm the only inmate went against the the uh the whole state of white people, costing two hundred million dollars. I tore up all that stuff. Elected chair. I did all that. What do you do? The people that send bad comments on me. What did you do? If you was locked up, what did you do? Kiss that butt. Run around. Tuck your head. Your tail between your legs. I didn't care if I had to do a thousand years or not. I'm not going to settle for, for this type of uh, stuff. Racism, nastiness, treat me like I'm a dog. Uh-uh, we'll fight. Fight me to my death. <laughs> you know, the other day ago, I'm going to speak on this. I was, my woman told me to look at the news. I saw this white dude hit this black man and these other white dudes you know, out of Alabama. I'm sure everybody's seen it. Yeah. And then one dude jumped in the water and swims all the way across there to join the little program, right? Now, true enough, I can say, hooray, good, we got black people finally sticking together, right? But I'm not. What I will say is this. It shouldn't even came to that. It shouldn't even came to that. You know. I mean, you still got white people running around trying to keep the shit started. You got a lot of white people that gets along with blacks, and blacks gets along with them. And we all, you know, like brothers and sisters, right? But we got these old ones coming from the 60s and the 70s, they still alive and talk to their little stupid kids, all this stuff. We ain't have it, bro. I'm that same person. Y'all don't get it, do you? Y'all don't get it. Now let me tell you something. I remember when I first got out of prison. You know, they gave me parole. Like I said, I cussed the parole board out, and they gave me parole. And I went home the next day. And, and when I decided to go back to prison to get off parole, cause I said, I'm not going to do no six, seven years out here on parole. I go back, get in some programs. Hold on, hold on. So you got out after 34 years. After, after, after doing all my time, 40. I don't know where you get 34 at. It was 40. And so when I got out, I'm like, man, what is this? Uh, How much more time did you have? I had six, about six or seven more years on parole, right? After 40 years, you had Yeah. Six. And look, I got a job making $26 an hour working at Royal Consumer Products as a machine operator. The same people I told you about that I cost that $200 million to Frankfurt, our state captain, the correction, when they heard that I was working that job, guess what I was paying a, a, a halfway house? What's that? 600 a week to stay in a halfway house. Mm. $600 a week. But I'm making $26 an hour, and uh, I'm doing overtime. I'm a supervisor, all this, of that whole production area. I ran a complex machine, in case you don't know what that is and you still think I'm stupid. That's a $3 million machine I ran. All my workers love me. I can hire and I can fire. I took all my guys on break times. And you know what kind of breaks I was giving my workers? Two, three hour breaks. You know why? Because before I took that position, we was bringing in like 15 skids a day. When I took that job, 
We went from 25 to 35 a day. So when we get over the quota, I said, break time is 15 minutes. I said, y'all come back in two and a half hours. How about that? They said, we love you. I was a good boss. I had every one of my, my people on break times too. I said, I tell a forklift driver, take these four people right here. Y'all go in here. He going to teach y'all how to drive a forklift. I want everybody on my crew to be able to run every machine in there. I was... But, you know, Frankfurt, when they heard about it, the Department of Corrections, they said, oh, I was still on parole. They took and shipped me from Louisville to Newport Covington in a drug halfway house. So I said, I don't know why they sent me up here. I'm not a drug addict. I, I don't do drugs. And they like... Uh, well, you heard, and you got to do what we tell you. Go by our rules. I found the job up there, machine operator. They said I couldn't work the job because I got to be there for the meetings. I got so frustrated. I said, uh-uh. I said, you know what? I'm going back to prison because here's one thing I knew. They gonna take me off here. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna hurt somebody. I'm going. I know I'm going back to prison. I had a choice. I can go back for a crime. I can go back on my own and get off parole. See, we got a system down here in Kentucky. If you do six months in a program, they can knock six months off your sentence all year, depending on what program you get in. I went back there in five programs. I did an extra year, got out, I'm on parole. I mean, what's one extra year? I look at how much time I already done. I'm coming off parole. So you did 40 years, got out, and, and, and then and went back and did a Made year. them take me back. I called 911, told them I won't go to prison. They said, what? And uh, they sent the police up there. The police said, we can't just put you, lock you up, you ain't did nothing. They said, who's your parole officer? And when he came the next day, I told him. He said, man, I know you ain't going to do it. I said, man, if you don't send me back, I'm going to hurt somebody. He said, well, okay. And I went back to prison. That was the first time I ever went to prison not getting in trouble. I did a whole year without a write-up. I'm used to getting 40, 50 write-ups a day. I did a whole year without one. Because I went in out with a plan. Like I said, I'm getting off parole. You ain't going to get me like that. Play with my life like that, you know. And uh, came out, off. But here's what I don't understand, man. People, like, I don't seek no self-glory. Let me tell you what I think about me, first of all. I think I was an idiot. Anybody that do, that got a 12 year sentence and turn it into 40, yeah, he's pretty dumb. Hey, let's back up a little bit before we go too far. What about the Alabama? What do you, what do you actually think about the Alabama thing? Well, I think it's about Alabama. I think it was a sign. It was a sign to show these white people, because you still got a whole bunch of them in this country trying to start stuff, right? They lay back, you you don't hear them. They, they really, they plotting. When you see all them people doing what they was going to do for Donald Trump, they ran up to the state captain, bust out the, the they, yeah. They ready for drama. And we all know it, right? In the black communities, we know it, man. So it ain't no time to let the girls down. It ain't no time where I get up on camera and tell all my little young people, put your guns down. No, I'm not. I'm not going to tell none of them put shit down. You know, you got this country going bizarre the way it's going. People need to learn how to protect themselves, protect their families and their properties and stuff like that. I'm not going to tell nobody to stop doing nothing. I'm going to tell these older people in the government and the churches. Let me get the churches. 
We got our Googling. And I wish all my fans would Google and see how many churches we have in America. Remember, Jesus started off with 12. 12 people. Changed all kind of stuff. Mindsets and books and everything was written. Movies. We got 300,000 churches. And when you add the the, the congregation to the 300,000, how many people come in that congregation? You're talking about millions. They want to get up by and run their mouth too about the youth. You know what? I'm going to stand up for the young people. I'm going to tell you churches, what's stopping you from going out here in these communities talking to these young people? What are you scared of? What are you scared of? John... 1 John 4.18 in the Bible says, there's no fear in love, perfect love catches out fear. Those with fear is not made perfect in love. Yeah, I know the scripture. I quote it. I quote that scripture. I can quote a whole lot of religious scripture. Quoting and living by is two different things, though, but check this out. Why ain't these churches out here in the worst time in America, why ain't they took to the streets out here really trying to go door to door, have people, going to these uh, uh, communities, these uh, parks, these uh, uh, wherever these young people be at and talk to them. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them a better way. Ah, uh, y'all sit back and well, it's up to them if they want to come to church. That ain't what Jesus did. He went to the people, man, and they came to him. But these preachers and stuff and these church people, they don't want to go out there in the streets. I ain't doing it. I ain't going to have nobody spitting on me, cussing me, or trying to kill me. Well, what, 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 what are you then? Shame on you. Shame on the government. Because y'all don't want to keep that stuff started. Uh, Biden and Trump and all you politicians, Crips and Bloods. Uh, that's what y'all are. Y'all know different from Crip and the Blood. Red and blue. That's what Crips and Bloods are. Republicans are, blo are Bloods. Democrats are Crips. And, and y'all y'all demonstrated all the time. We, we sat there and watched it on TV all the time. Talk about each other. Talk about each other's families. Trying to get each other locked up, trying to hurt each other, all of y'all fighting, and, and y'all think these young people ain't noticing in this? There's so much knowledge in the world now. Young people can go to the internet now and get all they want. You know, when I was growing up, we didn't have that type of knowledge. You know, these young people are older people now. They know what y'all doing. And y'all keep throwing all the blame on the young people. The blame is on the older people. Because the older people, yeah, what, what do a young man own? He don't own nothing. He don't own the government. He don't, he don't have nothing to do with the benefits, the food stamps, or none of that. Y'all be taking benefits, food stamps, and everything, uh, opportunities from these young people's families, mothers and fathers, uncles, aunties. Even from them. And you expect them to just come outside every day and act like they decent citizens? Man, the hell with you. We hell with all you politicians out there. You know, y'all ain't doing what y'all need to do. The hell with all the churches, except my church, Bates. That's a good church. Bates is a good church because they really try to help people. Pastor Bruce Williams, he helped me in and my woman gave us a house. You know, talk to us. But I'm telling you what, them opportunities, most of the young people out here, they ain't got nobody to talk to, man. All you church people and all these people, y'all don't even want to talk to them. Y'all think y'all too good to even go near them without realizing you worse than them. Yeah, you foul. Let me tell you what the Bible says about your, your, your righteousness, since y'all think y'all righteousness. 
He told all you people in churches, it's what God said about your self-righteousness, what you call righteousness to you, 50 rags. He said your righteousness is nothing but 50 rags to him. Because he knows y'all ain't going to do it right. Y'all ain't going to judge right. You know, everything is going to be based on deception. But I'm going to give you the sum right here. This is the devil's playground. This world. What's in it? And let me tell you something. Y'all don't know what's getting ready to come against you. I don't want to sit here and tell you. Because you ain't going to believe me anyway. But I'm going to tell all the young people. Girl. Don't get out and do all this dumb stuff. Put yourself in a trap. Put yourself behind a cage. You know, that's the trap. You know, put you in a situation. The only thing you feel like you can do is go out there and steal to get, you know, to make a living for yourself. And I I feel for you, man. And I love y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? I do, for real, man. I love all you young people out there. I mean, I know what you're going through, and I know y'all keep getting blamed for stuff. Y'all not to blame. It's the older people doing all this corruption, man. Sending people to war and making all these crazy rules and laws and making it hard for people to live, man. The older people's doing this. And uh, the young people's just responding. I love you. You know what? Just like they did in uh, Alabama. Let's get it, nigga. <laughs>